This is a Technics SL1200 Mark II. It has a problem with the torn arm and I show you how I replace it by following the instruction from James, known as Piper Frank here on YouTube. Please go check his videos, you will find a link here and in the description as well. As you can see, it makes a strong resistance to move and wants to get back in some specific positions. From what I understood, the pivot bearings are gone and since they are machine calibrated, I got that it makes no sense to mess with them, so I'm going to replace the entire piece. skating mechanism is not working as well and in general the arm is not free to move at all and that led to skips and mistracking. This video is not a tutorial or whatever, I'm just following James' instruction. I film myself to come back in case of mistakes and I'm sharing here just to show a bit more what it takes to do it yourself. First of all, I unplug the wall, remove the platter, can weight, cartridge and everything that could be removed. I put the unit on a very soft surface like on my bed. Now I'm removing the rubber base. There are three types of screws which I'm keeping separated. James has a brilliant video with lots of more information about undoing those screws. Now the rubber base should come right off. This thing here 
is the internal isolation padding which is made of something similar to fiberglass or something like that and it's really 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 brittle be very careful with it and watch out for shims and powder that it leaves Here I disconnect the earth lead from the pitch fader. Then the three screws which holds the torn arm base. Now lifting the deck, I allow the piece to slide off. I got the tone arm block on the bench. First thing to do here is to remove the two screws that hold in place the RCA cables clip. Easy to do, just remember how it was placed. I made a photo to make sure.
Now the two screws on the plate. And it will slide off. Make sure not to pull those cables too much. Okay, so those tiny wires are coming down from the toner, so I had to unsold them. Before proceeding, I tied a cotton thread to them, would be useful to guide in place the new ones. Wow. Now I am unscrewing partially the small PCB to access mounting screws. There are two screws here to be undone. The first was easy, the second one really pissed me off as it was too tight, but anyway I managed to get through. Now in this step it's very important to make sure the anti-skate is set to zero. For everybody it's power cut. And the arm came off. If you travel in the northern areas and perhaps in the south. I tied the cotton thread to the wire of the new toner and put it in place. Some of the white areas, you will see white houses. Everybody. 
Give a little pull to settle down the new wires. Be careful with them because they are very tiny and delicate. Securing now the screws back in. Now here I had a problem, the PCB screw didn't want to sit in and I feared I was damaging the thread, so I thought that it was a good idea to place a nut in between. But then I discovered that I wasn't able to set the arm height to zero position, so I had to remove it. I tried putting some oil on the screw to allow it to get in. And finally it went in. Here comes the fun part, those wires are really thin and short, I'm preparing them to be soldered down. black one was easy.
now time to put the pieces back together Those three screws must be tightened very carefully going around them. I almost forgot about the pitch earth lead. Padding is back in place, however, screwing too tight can break it. The rear is now fit. Yeah, looks nice. I added the counterweight back and did this test. Now it's nice and smooth, free to move. And the anti-skating now is working again. 